Hey everyone, a uh, little bit of a different setup for this video because in this video I want to talk about PS Readline. A uh, number of my previous videos, some of my weekly updates, some of my deep dive videos, people have noticed that my PowerShell environment looks a little bit different. And so in this video I wanted to really quickly just introduce what it is and how you can use it. As always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment and share would be appreciated. So PS Readline just really enhances my PowerShell environment. And the chances are you kind of have it already. But one of the kind of key things you might notice that's different is kind of, well, as I type over here, I just actually delete that. Well, it, it starts giving me this kind of history and this different view of, of what I'm doing. And that's PS Readline. I can also change the way my history works so I only get history based on kind of what I've typed. And I can do a huge amount of customization about my environment. Now, first things first, to actually get it, well, chances are you've kind of got it already. So PS Readline has actually been around for a really long time, but it's actually included. There's the big change with 2.1. It has this new history based and also these plugin based prediction. And so this 2.1 release, you can get it for PowerShell, Windows PowerShell 5.1. I can get it for PowerShell 7.0 and above, but it's actually shipped with PowerShell 7.1. So if I'm running PowerShell 7.1, I already have this PS Readline 2.1 included. Now, if you haven't, you can go and get it. So if I was kind of sitting here over in my PowerShell, well, straight away, I can do kind of a get module and I can look at my PS read line. And I can see I'm actually running the beta two version. Um, I'm doing some playing around with some new features the beta has, but you can absolutely just go and get whatever version you want. I can do kind of a, a find module. And you notice kind of that intelligence is kind of helping me there uh, a little bit. So I could say, hey, I want to use that one, but I'll say, well, show me all of the versions and show me the pre-release as well. And so now it's actually going off. So we can see, well, yeah, there's the 2.1 version, but also, hey, as I've got right now, is that kind of 2.2 beta 2. Then you would just install it. I could do kind of the install dash module, PS read line from an elevated PowerShell session. So I'd kind of right click and say run as administrator. Um, if there's a newer version, I can always do kind of the old update module, PS read line. And I could do kind of that dash allow pre-release if I wanted to actually get one of the beta versions. So you have it installed. Now, what can I do with it? Well, there's a massive customization I can do. I can customize the colors. I can add shortcuts. And one of the nice things maybe to start with is I can actually do kind of a get PS read line key handler. And this actually shows me all of the different keys I can actually leverage as part of this. So there's all the standard stuff here. So, oh, okay, look, I can enter to accept the line. That's all standard. But you see, well, there's backward delete character. Um, okay, backward kill an entire word. Um, and all different key presses I'm adding to there. Left arrow movement clear history, forward search history. And you actually notice I've replaced my up arrow and down arrow with this kind of history search backward and history search forward. But this is actually gonna start with my current input. So ordinarily in PowerShell, if I was just doing up and down arrows, it goes through my history and that's great. But what this lets me do is rather than just here, you can see I'm just going through my entire history of any commands I've typed. But if I actually start typing a command, now if I kind of do the up and down, notice it only shows me my history. I'm going up, down, up. That actually starts with the characters I have actually typed. So you can actually replace how those keys actually work. And there's a whole set of options for that. So if I do get PS um, read line option, 
these are all the different options I have available. So there's like edit modes, um, history save path, um, case sensitive, continuation prompts, prompt text, bell styles, colors I can do, word delimiters. There's a huge amount of customization into what I can actually do when I've got this PS read line actually installed. But the biggest thing most people see is, well, hey, as you start typing, it's kind of giving this history thing. And if I push F2, it switches it between kind of being in line as I'm typing or actually showing it kind of as that separate menu. So I'm pushing F2 to actually change that. Now, this is all about the prediction. So there's a prediction source. And I can do set PS read line option and you notice it's actually showing me hey prediction source and then there are different options so i can say well, none basically turn it off plugins so there were plugins available about that prediction for example there's an azure um, intelligent that uses ai to suggest commands i might want to run i can just base it on my history or i could say well history and plugin and that's actually what I've got turned on in here. So I have all of those different options available to me. And then the style of kind of that prediction, well, that's something I can set as well. That's the view style. And again, I can toggle that with F2, but I could also change it as part of the, well, those PS read line option. And I can say my prediction view style, and you can see I've got inline view, or I've got list view. So inline view is, hey, what I have here, the list view, I'm pushing F2 now, switches it to that view. Now what I actually do for, for my environment, if I just did kind of code, which would open VS Code and edit my profile, and I kind of have that ready over here already, let's make that a bit bigger oops there we go now i actually have kind of a version of a plugin for azure that only works on powershell 7.2 so i'm actually doing a little bit of extra stuff in my profile basically just say hey look i'm going to set a version minimum to 7.1.99999 and then if it's greater than 1.999 i.e 7.2 i set my prediction source to be history and plugin because that plugin only works with 7.2. If it's not, then it just bases it on the history. And then I'm setting those key handlers to instead of that default just history search, it actually now uses the PS read line based on the characters I've typed so far. So I'm replacing that default behavior to now say, well, actually base it on the text you've typed so far at the command line. But you can do a ton of other stuff as well. For example, here, I'm adding the Alt and then W key to save whatever I've currently typed into history, but don't execute it. So you can see basically it's running a couple of commands. So it's kind of, hey, getting the current buffer state, add it to the history, and then revert the line. So what does that look like? So here, if I just started typing something, so let's say I was doing new, AZ, resource, group, um, name, I don't know, John's RGS2, um, location, south, oh, something weird, there we go, <laughs> south, I've changed that, it's taking its time, <laughs> south central US, and I'm like, well, actually, I need to do something else first, so if I do alt W, it removed it, but what it's actually done, it put it in my history. So ordinarily, I would have just lost that text. But because of that Alt W, hey, it's now in my history and I can just go back to it. I might have run some other commands and then, hey, I can go and add it. It's now when I've created that resource group. So now maybe I'm going to do new or I might do a, a get and whatever that might be. I, I had that thing in my history and I can carry on working now. Now, there are other things that it kind of does for me as well. 
So I can totally customize what I'm doing. And one of the really powerful things you can actually do is, you saw me kind of look at my profile. Well, there's a sample profile. Let's just open that up super, super quickly. So if we open up their sample profile, this is like a mass of what is possible <laughs> with PS Readline, and uh, it's kind of crazy. But you can see they do things like, well, we'll set the edit mode to the Emacs editor. And then they do a whole bunch of different ways to kind of see the history. They have things about macros to execute a command. So they just do an MS build just by hitting control B in whatever the current folder is. They have different kind of tab complete, um, different functions. They have things to automatically do smart insert, delete of quotes and double quotes. So you can just kind of look at this and say, well, there's some cool stuff. I'm gonna take that and put that in my profile. And I'll put this in the description of the video. So this is kind of just like a, a nice place to go and, and just kind of take a look at some of the stuff I can actually do with this. Now there's kind of standard stuff I can do as well if I just kind of go up again. So I can do control and kind of right arrow to move one word at a time. You can see I'm kind of moving left and right. I've got control held down as I'm kind of just moving between this. So that's kind of a, a nice easy thing I can do there. And then some of the other things that is there is remember I talked about, this is showing history. So when I'm doing that prediction, it's all based on history. Now that's just because I've not really done anything interesting. But there's also other modules. If I did find dash module, az.tools.predictor, allow pre-release, there's actually this 0.2 Azure Tools Predictor. So if I started running more interesting commands, as part of that prediction, it would also be showing me things based on this plugin of, hey, based on what you've done so far, you might wanna run these other commands as well. So that would have been all about running that, hey, set PS read line option, history and plugin. So then maybe it would be like, oh, okay. It would show me other things based on, hey, you might wanna do this because of those other commands you've run. It would add some intelligence to that. One other thing I wanted to kind of show, this, this is new to the 2.2 version of PS Readline that's obviously in preview right now. Imagine I'm typing a command, and you know what? I'm just not sure what I can do next. I can push F1 to actually get dynamic help. So that was just pushing F1, and it's now showing me the help, but I can kind of go down, I, I can look at all of this help. When I'm done, I just hit Q, and I'm back to my command. Likewise, hey, I could start typing a parameter. If I do Alt and the H key, it shows me dynamic H for that parameter. Oh, okay, so I can see here, description, the location for the virtual machine, and kind of hit escape, I get out of that. So there's some nice things they're continually adding and really building this. But the whole point is it adds this great kind of color as I'm typing these commands, you can kind of see through the various options I have here. But it gives me these great features like, hey, this nice prediction. Again, I can hit that F2 key to change how I want this to actually show. Is it in line? Or is it that kind of list view? I can customize macros like you saw with that kind of Alt W to add it to my history without actually executing or anything you want to do, you set the key presses. So just kind of go and play around with it. Again, you probably have it already. If you start off, just kind of do that set PS read line option and your prediction source. And you have all those different options, remember? So play around with that. You can then modify your profile to maybe auto set those things, set other macros. And uh, I think you'll be good to go. So that was it. I just wanted to kind of super quickly show it because a few people have asked, what is that weird thing? Why do I get that history showing in my PowerShell? So it's just PS read line. Again, it's included as part of PowerShell 7.1, or I can go and get it for previous versions and Windows PowerShell, and it really just makes things a lot easier. So I hope that was helpful. Until next time, take care.